Hey guys, welcome back. We are going to go through our test 19 review sheet together. So I wanted to do something a little differently for this test. So you can actually go over every single question beforehand in case you had any questions. So if you want to skip around in this video to get to the numbers that you have problems with, feel free or just watch through that way you get all the answers. So I think what I'm going to do is every other test for the rest of the year. I will do a review like this and then for the opposite for the other test I will do the Kahoot review like we did for test 18. So that means that there will be a scheduled day set apart for review every other test and the other days you'll have to review on your own. Um, not really on your own because I'll still make the Kahoot and you can test your answers. So we are going to jump right in. Number one, what is the probability of rolling an odd number with one roll of a number cube? Then it says to express the probability as a decimal number. So remember probability with a number cube. A number cube is just like a die or dice. So you have to remember there are six sides to a die. So that's going to be our denominator when we're going to try to find the probability. And for the numerator, we're going to say, what are the chances that I'm going to roll an odd number? Or how many odd numbers are there on a number cube? So number cubes, remember the sample space for number cubes are the numbers one through six. And the sample space represents the possible outcome. So we're saying how many of these outcomes will be odd? One, three, and five are only odd numbers. So that means that there are three chances or three numbers that could make it so my outcome is odd. So three over six is our probability. But as you know, we need to reduce fractions when we can. So three over six becomes one half. And then the problem actually says, express the probability as a decimal number. So we have to change one half to a decimal. So you should um, hopefully have memorized by now that one half as a decimal is 0 0.5 or 5 tenths. If you didn't have that memorized, remember you can always change your fraction to a decimal by doing the division it represents. So one divided by two, we change one to 1 1.0 and then we do our division. Okay, so we also got five tenths or 0.5 for that. So that's the answer to number one. I'll circle my answers for you. Number two, it says Ibrahim's first seven quiz scores are shown below. below. What is the median of these scores? So remember we learned about mean, median and mode. The median is the middle number when arranged numerically. So what we want to do with those test scores or quiz scores, sorry, is arrange them numerically. So first we have 17. Then we have 18 twice, so we want to write both of those. We then have 19 twice and 20 twice. So 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20. So how many numbers is that? Let's count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven numbers. So we want to find the middle number. So one way to do this is just to cross off a number on each side. Okay, there's one number left. Perfect. That means this is our median. So our median is 19. So median is the middle number when arranged numerically. So I'll arrange them from least to greatest and then start crossing off on either side. If we had like an even number of problems, let's say we also had a 21 in here. This one, ooh, that's cool. Oh, sorry. Just figuring out cool new things I can do with this pen. This number would have also been circled and you would just find the average. So that's what you do if you had an even number. Number three, what percent of this circle is shaded? So I took these images right from the review sheet that you got. So it looks exactly the same as your paper. And it's hard to see on that PDF, I will tell you. So these are supposed to be the segments or sectors that are shaded in. But it says what percent. So one way we can do this is write this as a fraction. We have two pieces out of five that are, that are shaded. So remember, you can change any fraction to a percent by multiplying by 100%. That's one way we can do it. Multiply by 
and I'm going to write this as a fraction as well because that way it's easier to see what you can reduce or what you can cancel. So I can reduce or cancel between 5 and 100. So 5 becomes 1, 100 becomes 20, and then I multiply across and I get 40%. So I just said how many were shaded out of how many total to get 2 fifths. And then you multiply by 100% and then reduce. We also could have multiplied across first to get 200% over 5. And then if you did that division, you would have also gotten 40%. Okay, number four, a triangular prism has how many faces? So you need to remember that the faces are sort of like the flat parts of the shape that you see. So how many flat parts do we see of the shape? And you really have to think spatially here because you can't really see each side. So you have to try hard to visualize. So we have the front face of the triangle, the back face, so one, two, the bottom, three, the, let's say the right side, four, and the back side of it, five. So we have this front rectangle, but then we also have this back rectangle. So in total, that was five faces. Um, just to review the other terms as well, we also have vertices, those are the corners, so one, two, three, four, five, six, so six vertices. This isn't part of the problem, but I want to make sure to review these terms with you. And then the last term we have is edges, so those are sort of like the straight lines that connect our vertices. Maybe I'll do a different color so you can see. Let's do this. So edges, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So just outline the, outline the drawing to determine your uh, edges. All right, so the main answer to that was five faces though, don't forget. Next, number five, it says, what is the area of triangle ABC? So I have that triangle over here on our right. And you need to remember the area of a triangle, that's supposed to be an A, eh, that's all, it just doesn't look good. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. So let's start filling in those numbers. What is the base of this triangle? It is 12. And remember the height of a triangle, the height of a parallelogram is the perpendicular line. So the height here is five. So let's just multiply in order. What's 1 half times 12? And then what is 6 times 5? That is 30. And then remember for area, our units are squared, no matter what our unit is. So in this case, it would be square centimeters. You can write this multiple ways. Square centimeters, you can also write centimeters squared. You could write out square centimeters, whatever you prefer. I do know on um, the Google Classroom quiz form that you use to take your test, you can't really write exponents, so just start either write it like this or like this, square centimeters. Question six says, which of these terms describes triangle ABC? Equilateral, isosceles, obtuse, or right? And the answer is D right triangle and that is because it is a triangle with a right angle that's what that little square represents a right angle or 90 degrees remember equilateral means all sides are the same length we know that's not true isosceles mean two sides are the same length that's also not true in this case and then obtuse means that there is an obtuse angle in the triangle or an angle larger than 90 degrees uh, we can know that's not true just visually. So the 90 degree angle is always going to be marked. Angle A over here you can tell is acute and angle B is acute as well. Okay, so number six was D, right triangle. Number seven, simplify. All right, so you're just working through this problem. And remember, this is when you need to apply, excuse me, the order of operations. So if you need to write this down, sorry, that's really bad handwriting. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So we do parentheses first, then exponents, then multiplication or division as you go from left to right, 
addition or subtraction as you go from left to right. So let's look at this problem. There's no parentheses, so we move on. There, there are some exponents, so we go to our problem with exponents and we do that first. All right, so I'm gonna rewrite my whole problem after doing that work with exponents. And I don't know why I wrote it backwards, but I did. Next, multiplication and division. So there's only one pair there. There's four times two. So I'm gonna go and do four times two. So eight plus, what is four times two? It's eight. And then rewrite the rest of the problems around it. Please remember to do things this way. Um, some of you in the past would get confused. You would do this first. And you'd say, okay, nine, what do I do next? I do my times two, so you do nine times two. Don't do that. That's one of the reasons I want you to rewrite your problem. And then we do our addition and subtraction as we go from left to right. So I'm going to do eight plus eight first. Then I will do 16 minus nine. So I get the answer seven. So hopefully you got that answer. Number eight, we have two and a half squared, two and a half squared. So remember when you are multiplying mixed numbers, because remember this is really two and one half times two and one half. Before you multiply mixed numbers, change them to improper fractions. So two and one half as an improper fraction is five over two. So we have five over two squared. So I'm gonna show you the two ways you can write this problem. You can say five over two times five over two, that's option one. Option two is to sort of distribute that exponent to both parts of your fraction. So you would write five squared over two squared, okay? Either way, you will get the same correct answer. It's just about uh, your preference really at this point. Obviously, the second option is a little easier to write. You don't have as much writing to do. So let's evaluate this. Our numerator, what is 5 squared? It's 25. Our denominator, what is 2 squared? That is 4. So now we have this improper fraction that we want to change back into a mixed number. So remember to do that, you can just do 25 divided by 4. And you would get 6 and 1 fourth. So that is your answer. So change your mixed number to an improper fraction and then square that. Okay, I might be going through these quickly, but just recall that you can always come back or please let me know if you have any questions. Number nine is solving a proportion. So remember to solve proportions, we cross multiply. To solve proportions, you need to cross multiply. And remember a proportion is when we have two ratios or two fractions set equal to each other. So that equal sign is important, otherwise it is not a proportion. Okay, so we have six ninths equals eight over n. We're trying to figure out what the answer is. One thing you might recall that you can do is reduce your fraction first. That will save you a lot of trouble, uh, a lot of extra work in the long run. So six over nine, what does that reduce to? We can divide both of those terms by three. So six divided by three is two over nine divided by three is three. And then we cross multiply. So we go from this denominator to that numerator, two times n is two n. And then this denominator to this numerator, three times eight is 24. And then remember, this is a an unknown factor. So you might not remember writing down this rule, but we did talk about this rule. When you have an unknown factor to solve, you divide the product by the known factor. So divide the product by the known factor, and that would give you 12. So n equals 12. Now, some of you are thinking all the way back up here that you saw the relationship to get from two to eight. We multiplied by four. So you could do the same thing here to get from three to whatever n is, we'll multiply by four. Okay, that's another way to do it. So if you see those relationships beforehand, go ahead and take that approach. You can always double check your proportions. So let's look at our original proportion. And now we said the denominator is 12. You can check these 
by either cross multiplying again, what's 6 times 12? What's 9 times 8? Okay, that works. Or you can, sorry, I'm getting so in depth with this one. You can also reduce both fractions to make sure they are equivalent. So like I said here, we could divide by 3 on each side. So 2 over 3. Here, we could divide each of these numbers by 4. So 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 to 4 divided by 4 is 3. And 2 thirds does equal 2 thirds. Okay, so there's a lot of ways to check your proportions in the long run. Okay, went a little in-depth for that one, so I hope someone needed that. Number 10 is 3 cubed minus the square root of 9. So 3 cubed, you have to remember, means 3 times 3 times 3. So what is 3 times 3 times 3? It is 27 minus what is the square root of 9? It is 3. So what's 27 minus 3? 24. All right, so you just have to remember what your exponents represent. It means you take this number and multiply it by itself this many times. Number 11, we have 25 times 18 over 5. 25 times 18 over 5. Now, we could do 25 times 18, get that answer, and then divide by 15. But there is a faster way to do these problems. So we are going to cancel or reduce first. Uh, we can reduce 25 and 15, or we can reduce uh, 18 and 15, either way. Um, I think what I'm going to do is reduce uh, 25 and 15 because they are both divisible by 5. So 25 divided by 5 is 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3. And then if you notice, we can continue to reduce. We can reduce 18 and 3. They are both divisible by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. 18 divided by 3 is 6. So now that big problem just turned into 5 times 6, which is 30. So that was just a case of reducing your problem. Number 12, we have to do uh, 3 fifths of 60. So you need to remember that we would write our fraction of translates mathematically into multiplication and then 60, we might want to write as a fraction. So let's write 60 over 1. So we have 3 fifths times 60. So we can do 3 times 60 and then divide that by 5. Or we can reduce first. So let's reduce our 5 and our 60. 5 becomes 1. 60 becomes 12. And now we multiply across. 3 times 12 is 36. 1 times 1 is 1. So I am just going to leave it at... 36. So great job on these. Number 13, we have another case of order of operations, and this time we have decimals. So 6 plus, and then in parentheses, 1.2 minus 0.37, or 1 and 2 tenths minus 37 hundredths. So first we must do our work in parentheses. And with decimals, it's always easier to write these out vertically. And it's also important to line up your decimal numbers. So notice our decimals are in line. So the numbers in the tenths place line up, the numbers in the hundredths place line up, and I'm gonna fill in this blank with a zero here because that will help us, and we are going to subtract. So I cannot do zero minus seven, so I will borrow and make this a 10. 10 minus seven is three. I cannot do one minus three, so I'm going to borrow, make this an 11. What's 11 minus 3? That's 8. And then carry down your decimal point. Okay? Then we have, are left with, if you want to write, we are left with 6 plus 83 hundredths or 0.83. If you want to line this up vertically as well, you can turn any whole number into a decimal number by adding those, that decimal point and those zeros in the blank. And then we just add vertically as well. Or if you just knew this, you don't have to line those up. I do recommend lining up, especially for um, maybe bigger problems. So we have six in 83 hundredths. Great job on that. 
Number 14, 3 divided by 5 tenths, or 3 divided by 0.5. So turn this into long division. 3 divided by 0.5. You need to recall, make sure this is definitely locked in your memories, that you cannot divide by a decimal. We need to make it a whole number. So what we're going to do is we're going to move our decimal point over to make it a 5. And remember when we move that decimal point over, we have to move the decimal point over in our dividend as well. So we move our decimal point over and it has become 30. So now we have 30 divided by 5, which is a lot easier to look at and is simply 6. Okay? All right, so very good on that. Let's keep going. Number 15, 3 and 3 eighths plus 4 plus 2 and 3 fourths. Remember, in order to add with fractions, we need to have a common denominator. So look at your denominators. We have the denominator 8, the denominator 4. Our common denominator is going to be 8. So let's make sure we change all of these fractions to a denominator of 8. So to change our fraction here, we remember we would multiply both of these terms by 2, so it becomes 6 eighths. Let's add our whole numbers first. 3 plus 4 plus 2 is 9. And then let's add our, our fractions. 3 eighths plus 6 eighths is 9 eighths. Okay, so obviously 9 eighths, we can't leave it like that. That's improper. So 9 plus, what is 9 over 8? It is 1 and 1 eighth. So let's add 9 plus 1 and 1 eighth, and we would get 10 and 1 eighth. So you should have gotten 10 and 1 eighth as your final answer for number 15. Number 16, 3 and 2 thirds minus 2 and 3 fourths. Once again, we're doing subtraction, so we need um, to get a common denominator. Whenever you add or subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. So look at these numbers, 3 and 4. Our common denominator is going to be 12. I'm going to write this vertically. All right, so how do we change these to a denominator of 12? So here I would multiply by 4, so I'm going to multiply my numerator by 4. Don't forget, um, I think this I've seen this quite a few times, when you're changing your fractions, if you change your denominator, don't forget you need to change your numerator. Some people would just write 2 again. All right, so let's look at our section, second fraction. How do we get from 4 to 12? We multiply by 3, so that means we need to multiply our numerator by 3, and we would get 9. That's really messy, so I'll write this again. 3 and 8 twelfths minus 2 and 9 twelfths. All right, we come into another problem. I can't do 8 minus 9, so I'm going to borrow 1 from here, and I'm going to write that 1 as 12 over 12. Remember, 12 over 12 equals 1. So now I have 2 and 20 twelfths minus 9, <laughs> excuse me, minus 2 and 9 twelfths. So 20 minus 9 is 11. Remember your denominator stays the same. 2 minus 2 is 0. So my answer is simply 11 twelfths. So we had a lot of work to do in that problem. We had to change to a common denominator. And then we also had to uh, borrow from our whole numbers. So make sure you're following all those steps. All right, let's keep going. We're almost done, so good job. Number 17, 5 and 1 third divided by 4. So how do we do this? 5 and 1 third divided by 4. First of all, if we're multiplying or dividing with mixed numbers, let's change them to improper fractions. So 5 and 1 third becomes... 16 over 3. So remember, you multiply here, and then you add this. Divided by 4. Now, what do we do when we are dividing fractions? I'm just going to write this out so it sticks. You multiply by the reciprocal. So make sure you pay attention. If you get these problem, these sorts of problems wrong, make sure you pay attention to what we do here. You leave your first fraction the same. You change your sign. 
and then you do the reciprocal of the second fraction. Okay, you only do the reciprocal of the second fraction. You leave your first one. What's the reciprocal of four? It's one fourth. So now we have 16 thirds times one fourth. If you want to reduce first, you can. So uh, 16 could become four, four could become one. So four times one is four, three times one is three. So we get the improper number three, excuse me, four thirds, and that becomes one and one third, okay? So your final answer is one and one third. Number 18 is really nice because they tell you exactly what to do. It says to change a fraction to a percent, multiply the fraction by 100%. And then it says to change two thirds to a percent. So it just told you what to do. It said to multiply by 100%. And so we can make this a fraction by giving it a denominator of one. Two times two, excuse me, two times 100 is 200%. And three times one is three. So we can't leave our answer like this. We're going to have to do our division. So 200% divided by three. Can three go into two? No. How many times does three go into 20? Six times. Six times three is 18. So we'll subtract bring down our zero. How many times does three go into 20? We just did that six times. Six times three is 18. We have a two. And now notice that uh, we can write a decimal point because we're at our ones place and we're moving into our tenths place. So we need to do that decimal point. And then we're left with two over three. So we have a couple options here. You can either continue going as a fraction or you could have left, excuse me, you can continue going as a decimal or which is what I sort of like inherently started doing or what you could do is uh, write your answer as a fraction which we have two over three left. So if you didn't put that fract, that decimal point there, even though that's how I kind of like to do it, you would have 66 and two thirds percent. The problem with this percentage is if you did keep going, you would have ended up with six forever. So um, if you ever have a denominator of three and you're doing your percentage, why don't you leave your answer with your a fraction remainder? Otherwise you'll have repeating decimals. Um, so I should have caught that before I just started writing the decimal, but I, I usually prefer decimal answers. So that's why that happened. But also you could write your remainder over your divisor. Okay, so that was 66 and two thirds percent, just to review. Oh, I didn't write the rest of these, that's kind of funny. I don't know how that happened. Maybe they got erased. Number, oh, this is strange. Sorry, it's not typing. I think my screen froze. Uh-oh, maybe the battery died. No, well, it's not writing at all. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. It looks like my last two. Man, I really needed to do those. Let me troubleshoot this. Oh, there's that. No, oh, what happened? Let's try to do this. Oh, guys, it's not working. I don't know what happened. Um, We're still recording. It's just not letting me write anymore. And I, w I did have the coordinate plane up there to show you number 20. So um, I guess I'll just do this vocally. Number 19, write 3 and 3 fourths as a decimal numeral. So 3 and 3 fourths would become 3.75. And then you would add that to 2.5. So just vertically line up 3.75 and 2.5 and then add those. And you would get 6.25. So the answer is there's really two parts to number 19. The first point part is 3.75 and then the sum would become 6.25. And I really don't know why this isn't working. So I